Hello, welcome to the Two Old Guys Reselling Podcast, where reselling is our priority and dad jokes are mandatory. I am one half of your host, OSP, old school, old school picker, stress the word old, old school picker, Chris, along with my co-host, wrong direction this way, Caleb, <laughs> Caleb from the Old Pass. Introduce yourself, Caleb. I'm Caleb from the Old Pass, the second half of the two old guys from <laughs> podcast. Uh, the younger we version. You. The yeah, younger well, version. Yeah, not much, but a little bit younger. <laughs> <laughs> um, now, if you guys watch my YouTube channel, you will remember Caleb. I went to his uh, house, uh, what, two weeks ago, three weeks ago now, probably. Something like that. Uh, done a video where, because he works out of a shed. We We are resellers on eBay. He works out of a shed just like I do. We've done the grand tour of Caleb's shop, and I was impressed not only with his shop, but with him as well. And uh, t- tell them how this podcast got started, Caleb. Well, <laughs> that is a <laughs> uh, funny story. So I was talking to my wife, and uh, she says, you know, it would be funny if you guys had a podcast and called it the two old guys reselling podcast or the two old guys podcast, we added reselling. But uh, I said, yeah, that'd be kind of neat, wouldn't it? Cause we're, you know, you're the old school picker. We're the old paths. I said, that's two old guys. So, and you know, credit to Tanya, she came up with the name, but it, it kind of worked great. And uh, I messaged you, you that yeah, Monday you morning and I'm like, Oh yeah, this is where I really messed up up right here. I messaged Chris and I'm like, hey, you know, uh, Tanya came up with this name. She said we ought to start this podcast and call it the Two Old Guys Podcast. And Chris is like, yeah, absolutely, let's go. And I'm like, wait, no, this I'm just kidding. He sends me this message, and within three seconds, I said, let's do it. (laughs) Yeah, and I'm like, well, that wasn't what I thought you was going to say. I thought you'd laugh and be like, yeah, that's funny. (laughs) Yeah, well, here we are. So uh, a few weeks later, here we are. We're filming our first episode. Uh, At the time of recording this, we have six subscribers, (laughs) and I think me and Caleb make up for all six of them between us and our families. That's exactly right. Yeah, We'll we'll see where it goes. Um, You know who... You know who's probably more excited about this podcast than we are? Who's that? That would be Jimmy and Ken over at Reseller Clickbait Podcast. I thought about this guy. I met these guys before. These guys are awesome. But now they can, they no longer hold the title for worst reselling podcast (laughs) on the internet. (laughs) That's all ours. So so shout out Jimmy and Ken. You guys are off the hook. You guys are no longer the worst. Me and Caleb proudly, proudly took that title from you guys. So uh, (laughs) yeah, the reseller uh, clickbait podcast, go check those guys out. Trash to cash, Dave, he can quit hounding those guys now because uh, (laughs) I know he hounds them and says they're the worst, but uh, wait till he sees (laughs) Yes. Oh, yeah. 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 All right. You've got some experience, man. I'm sitting here. This is my first, besides the video you did here, this is my first, you know, interactive video on YouTube. So, yeah. Well, uh, well, yeah. So, (laughs) welcome to the jungle. (laughs) (laughs) Well, I mean, yeah, I do have experience behind the camera, but this right here is a totally different setting. Now, if you go back way back on my channel, the first year to get monetized, you know, you got to get the four on YouTube, you got to get the 4,000 watch hours and stuff. So I did do a few lives Mm -hmm. on my channel, like four or five, I think, where I done some interviews and, uh, and this is kind of that same setting, but that's been three, three and a half years ago. So yeah, yeah, this, uh, yeah. I don't know how much my experience on YouTube really helps in this setting because it's a, it's a totally different animal for sure. Absolutely. So no, we're excited about it. Uh, Caleb, another thing about this that makes this interesting is we live 15 minutes apart. Yeah. <laughs> so not only have we became really close friends uh, meeting each other at yard sales, we've seen each other at the post office numerous times. <laughs> But uh, and we talk on Messenger and that type of stuff. 
but we're also uh, each other's uh, competition. So, <laughs> you know, that's always interesting. You know, I hope Caleb does good, but I always hope I do a little better. So, <laughs> but yes, Caleb's really good though. I've watched his store. I said it in the video I recorded with Caleb. I watch his uh, store more than I watch anybody else's store on eBay. And I know he watches mine a lot too, because we want to see what we, we, you know, we want to see what we missed out on. So, yep, yep. No, and we, we check you out all the time, man. Yeah. All so, and I, I watching your store, I've been missing out on a lot because you've had a lot of good sales here lately. What What's been your best sale uh, this week or this past weekend? We had uh, probably. About a week ago, we sold a, a Sanyo VCR DVD recorder mm -hmm. for $119.99. So that's a pretty good one. We that's had another good. one, similar price, like $110. That was the good ones. Of course, you know, you got some that are in between up and down. You got some cheap ones and some good ones, but that's yeah. probably our best one in the last week. But yeah. I like those all day, man. When they work and they're good. Them are, them are good. They're just a little bit, you know, a little bit harder to pack. But no, right. no, really. They're not bad, though. I mean, anything that I don't mind packing anything like that that's square <laughs> or yeah. rectangle. Yeah. You know, it's when you get yeah. into those odd shaped items is what I hate. Uh, yeah. But actually, before you got in the studio, uh, I've had a slow day today. I don't I have know, to. I've yeah. had, you know, 30, 40 dollars of sales today. But right before yeah. you got into the studio, I had somebody came in and bought three audio books from oh, me. Oh, awesome. So, you know, even though they're 11 bucks a piece, bought three of them, that was Man, $33 still. sale right there. So that was good. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, my best sale last weekend was, we're filming on a Tuesday, by the way. Yep. Um, my best sale last weekend was I sold a, another train car and it was a Lionel from the fifties, sixties, that era. I mean, old vintage. And, uh, it had, it was a barrel car. It had oh, little cool. bitty like wine barrels, you know, that sat on the car. I sold it for 50 plus shipping. So oh, it's good. Uh, yeah. That was probably my best sale of the weekend for sure. Um, not the greatest weekend. I think I sold a little over $400 this past weekend, but, uh, yeah, I mean, anybody's up and down. Everybody that does it knows it that. Is. Anybody yeah. that tells you different, they line. They are That's exactly right. <laughs> so if you're uh, making huge sales every day. You're doing something we ain't doing. Because I, yes, I mean, yes. Well, I think they're know. probably living in a market that we're not. Yeah, they in. have they, to be. That, that's know. a lot of it. Um, I tell people on YouTube that a lot. You know, a lot of your success is going to be dependent upon where you live. Yeah. And what better person to talk to about that than per somebody that lives 15 minutes from me? Because we Absolutely. literally we pick the same thrift stores. We pick the same yard sales. Um, I know three different times last, last year that I either came right behind you or you came right behind me. So yeah. Yeah. <laughs> because we compared yeah. notes when we got home. So probably the yeah. best one was the Looney Tunes yard. Oh, sale. That, that, that yard sale was unreal. Like, but that worked out. That worked out good for both of us. Yeah, so, Absolutely. Yeah, we could tell that story. Um, Caleb got to the yard sale before I did. The woman had a ton, a ton of vintage Looney Tunes stuff. Oh my gosh! What all, what all did you get? Man, I got I got salt and pepper shakers that was Roadrunner and Wiley Coyote. Yeah, I got figurines. I got uh, I got two of the towels that mm -hmm. you sold. They were exactly like the ones you sold, but mine had the cardboard flap over the top mm -hmm. uh, so i sold two of those same exact towel um i got you know just like a cookie no i didn't get the cookie jar i think you got the cookie I, jar. I had it. <laughs> um, but i got i got tons of stuff like that i got some watches i just sold two of the watches uh, a couple weeks ago for like 75 or 80 dollars a piece mm -hmm. and they didn't even work you know i mean they're just they need batteries and they're untested and they sell and uh, you asked her about oh yeah I did. I did i tried i tried i'm like uh is this all you got she said well i got some shirts somewhere mm -hmm. i said well i you know uh if you can find them i'd be happy to look at them and she's like well i'll look for them and she never did so and a I just, few, you know, few hours later in yeah, 
old yeah. school picker. <laughs> yeah. And I'm over there picking, and yeah. I did see the cookie jar. She had a box of World of Warhammer books, too. Yeah, and I, see, I passed those right up. I didn't even um, have a clue. I've done, I I done really clue. good with those. I paid yeah. like 20 bucks for the box. and Yeah, that's awesome. I've seen I, I, I lotted them up in small lots, you know, of five, six books a lot of times. And I think I probably sold $200 worth of those books. See, it's so easy to just pass that stuff. stuff. And well, that's why YouTube is valuable because how are yeah. you going to know, you know, right. if you don't educate yourself? Well, too, sometimes um, when it's a sale, everybody talks about the bad sales, you pass over stuff. But sometimes I think the good sales, because I, I know I do, I get tunnel vision on certain items. I do, too. I do and I too. still, even though it's a great sale, I still leave some stuff. Like you said, you left the cookie jar. Yeah. And you didn't even look at the World of Warhammer books. I had but no as idea. I was looking at the World of Warhammer books, my wife was with me that day. She goes over to a cardboard box. <laughs> big old box like a large walmart size box and she's digging in it i think there was a few plush or something on the top and she throws the plush you know to the side they wasn't looney tune and she starts bringing out single stitch 1990s <laughs> uh looney tunes t-shirts and see that's that's what i missed yeah, yeah I, well i mean they wasn't out there when you was there though so but she yeah. found them by the time i got there if I'll give you a hint if you want to beat me at yard sales. You just got to get up early because, <laughs> because well, I'm not really an early bird. <laughs> well, that's that's the uh, the the trick to us is we are we are up. Yeah. And that's credit to Tanya, man. She wants to be there when it opens. So yeah. if they open at eight, we're there at 745. You know, we just got burned on one of those early birds uh, oh, was it last man. weekend or the last weekend. Before? weekend. <laughs> yeah, it was last Thursday. Yeah. She uh, she says there's one at uh, eight o'clock or seven o'clock or something, and we get up and man, we're zipping down the road and we're there about fifteen minutes early. We drive up and there's a chain across the gate and it says canceled due to weather, but the kicker is, it said rain or shine uh, on the I'm Facebook. Like, what yeah. kind of weather did you cancel for? Yeah. You know, because it wasn't raining. It I mean, I don't know. Yeah, but, yeah, well, yeah. Bad. I. I I I, did, I actually didn't go this weekend. Um, I, I was going to go Thursday, and it was kind of you know, like you said, na yeah. just nasty weather. Then Friday, I got up to go. I got a, I was up, man. I was like six o'clock. I was ready to go. Oh, you was getting ready. And I was, uh, you know, I looked outside, and it was raining Friday yeah. too. And then I got on Facebook. I was like, you know, if I find you know four or five, I'll go out. I couldn't find any period so uh, I, I think the rain just kind of scared everybody off did you end up did. yeah did you end up going to some this weekend friday we went to one uh it was in crab orchard yeah it, it was a uh rain or shine but it was in a garage just like right off of 70 and uh, i didn't get a ton but one thing i got was these little stanley like the tool brand stanley it's called mm -hmm. stanley jr and it's like model cars that you put together, you know, use a CO2 cartridge to make them run, uh, like a dump truck, bulldozer, all kinds of stuff. I got like 13 or 14 of those, uh, for three bucks a piece. And they, they selling for like 30, 40 bucks a piece. So not a yeah. bad, not a bad deal. And I bought, I bought a few other things, but, eh, you know, I wouldn't call it like a, a super yard sale or nothing, but it was okay. Yeah. I didn't, I didn't even go. I was, when yeah. I woke up and I seen the weather, I was like, I don't really want to get out because I'm probably not going to be any. I and really then, didn't through it either. Yeah. And then I, I looked and I just didn't see any on Facebook. Um, mm -hmm. I think most people around here post them on the Facebook group pages instead of Facebook marketplace. Well, they may I do think, it. I think that's where I'm missing some of these, but. If uh, all the listeners and viewers at home, I just moved to this area about two years ago. So Caleb knows the area and knows where all the honey holes are way better well, than I do. So I've got a new uh, strategy this year, though. I'm just going to come to your house and follow you. <laughs> <laughs> and right behind you. Yes. So uh, that's my strategy going into this year. So, uh, yeah, so we'll see how it goes. But um, show up early. <laughs> yeah, but I was speaking of Facebook. I was on Facebook uh, yesterday, I think. Now, when I went up to your house uh, after I toured the shed, of course we hung out. Caleb mm -hmm. bought me dinner. 
uh man that was nice so i appreciate that but and we done go. the we done the video then he gave me another tour of a little project he has oh, going on gosh. with a camper that he bought yeah. and as i'm scrolling on facebook yesterday i seen the camper that he just showed me two yeah. weeks ago was for sale so, yes, sir. so what <laughs> happened to that uh well I started working on it yesterday a little bit, sealing the roof and uh, things like that. And as we was, you know, we've done some stuff already, but as we was just working on it, we kept finding more and more problems. It was just one of those, not necessarily a nickel and dime or more like a, you know, a hundred here, a hundred there. <laughs> so it needs pretty much a gut and redo. So I just don't have it in me right now to do that. So me and Tanya, you know, neither one of us had it in us to do that. And we decided, let's just see if we can't sell it. Uh, you know, try to get most of our money back if we can. Maybe somebody out there wants a project. You know, I right. don't know. But I mean. When you originally bought it, you didn't think it was going to be any project, did you? You thought it was ready no, to go, right? No, we was we was told it was we were told it had a few problems, mm -hmm. you know, and we was okay with what we were told, man. When we started, we was going to tear up the carpet. So, you know, we had anticipated new flooring, new furniture, that type of stuff. So we was ready for that, you know, well, when we started tearing up the carpet, man, the floor, the subfloor is like soaked. I'm like, how did we not smell this? And how did we not feel this? And, you know, how did we miss it? But we did. And, uh, yeah, we just, you know, we've, we've not had a really bad purchase in a while like that. So, you know, just chalk it up to a life experience. It happens. You just have to roll with the punches. So you're not going to go into flipping campers for a living. <laughs> no. Well, actually you are trying to flip this one though. Well, I'm, I'm going to lose money though. I'm not going to make <laughs> no. any money. Well, that sounds like a lot of what I do on reselling. So. Absolutely. I mean, I'm used to it. So. Yeah. So, yeah. Yeah. Now you're down to my level. Yeah. We, oh, we're, we do the same thing. So. <laughs> yeah. Sometimes man, you, get, you just got to take it. Uh, yeah. I, I, we was talking the other day too about returns. And uh, I've got a return out right now that is just about, it's driving me nuts because I, I, I don't know how the story ends. Uh, if you guys watch my videos, you guys will, might remember it. But uh, for anybody that didn't, I sold a tipsy elves oh. men's extra, extra large gator Hawaiian button up short sleeve shirt. As soon as the item was delivered, uh, I, I had it listed for 40 the guy, the buyer sent a best offer of 25. And I thought, you know what? I paid 350 for that shirt. I'm going to take the 25 bucks, take the 25 bucks, give him a great deal, right? Yeah. Ship, it, ship it out. It gets yeah. delivered within, I don't know, hours of it being delivered. I get a return message saying the shirt would not fit. Now that has been that, you know, that's no big deal, right? No big yeah. deal. Right. Well, uh, here we are. Uh, how long are we? We're about two and a half weeks in, and he still has not shipped my shirt back. So I don't know he's going to ship it out about the 29th day of the 30 day yeah. <laughs> return policy and expect a full refund. So I don't know how that story is going to end. <laughs> I had this happen to me last, was it last year with the Walt Disney goofy hat? I remember uh, that. Yeah. yeah, they bought it for Halloween and then yeah. said it didn't fit. And of course, Halloween, <laughs> Halloween was over. They get it, they send it back. But I don't know if that's how this shirt's going to end. So and, and what is bucks. up? Oh what man, is I hate up that. With eBay's giving them like three dang weeks, man. That is crazy. Crazy. I, Open a return and you can hold it for like three weeks before you even mail it. Yeah, that's so ridiculous. they can. You know, if you got a thirty day policy, they can keep it thirty. They can keep it three more weeks. Like, yep, basically. I yeah. mean, it is just, that's the craziest thing.
So not only is this guy going to wear this shirt once, he's probably going to wear it like four times. <laughs> <laughs> oh my God. Yeah. So it's going to be like wore out by the time <laughs> I get it back. But yeah, oh that, that drives me crazy. I don't sell on Macari anymore, but one mm. thing I've loved about Macari, the item gets delivered. They've got three days. I, I that think would that, be so awesome. Oh, I think that's what it was. I think it was three days. They got three days to leave you feedback. If they don't leave feedback, it automatically leaves you positive feedback. They've got three days on the return. I I, it, I believe it's still like that. I, I've not so, sold on uh, Macari in a couple of years, but when I'd done Macari, that's how it was. And listen, I love eBay. I'll go down with the ship with eBay, but uh, they have something. They have some things they could learn from Macari for sure. Oh, yeah. Man, um, even a 10 day policy. I mean, yeah, just something reasonable. You yeah. know, maybe you live out in the sticks and you can't go to the post office every day. Right. Okay. A week, 10 days. If you can't get there in 10 days, I mean, and most places you could schedule a pickup, you know, most places. Mm -hmm. So I don't understand why they need three weeks. And no, uh, I think, I think that's, that's a great. lot. Um, and, you know, I would love for them to, uh, go system wide with that on yeah. like a three or 10 day, but, and I don't sell a lot of clothing, so it don't affect me a whole lot, mm. but with clothing, you would think they could uh, move that return return system up a little bit. And uh, the feedback what? too, it's ridiculous. Yeah, um, <laughs> but, but I did change the way I leave feedback here lately. I, yeah. I remember that. Yeah. Remember about a few that. months ago, I, I changed that to where I just leave it now once they leave me mm. positive. Yeah. Now, once I do go in there every week or so and mm. items that have been delivered for over 30 days, I will go ahead then and leave a positive feedback. But, and I have noticed I'm not getting as many feedback as I used to, but you know, in the grand scheme of things, what does feedback mean? on yeah. eBay anyways. <laughs> so it's not like it's super important. It's not, you know, so I don't care if they leave it or not. Just don't leave me negative. I just got yeah. tired of rewarding bad buyers, you know. Oh, I understand that. You know, that, like, that like, brings up a good point too. I was meaning to tell you about this and I forgot. We rolled over kind of a milestone today. We rolled over two thousand feedback today. So we're sitting at two thousand one yeah. right now. So Ooh. congratulations. I'm excited about that. Yeah, that is. That's kind of a big deal. Yeah, I think so. Well, three years, almost three years. Yeah. Uh, so not full time, three just three years, you know, full time about mm, a year and seven or eight months, something like yeah. that. What I would call full time, you know. Uh, so, I mean, I feel like that's pretty good, you know. Yeah. Well, you're you are a lot like me. Uh, and that's a good segue there, too. Uh, you do consider yourself full time, but you do have other responsibilities and other jobs. Right. And I really meant to bring that up in the video we did together. <laughs> that video just kind of took off and uh, we didn't get around to talking about it, but we can talk about it here. Uh, I know, I know uh, reselling is not really your first job. It's kind of, even though you're full time, it's kind of your second job. Yeah, it's the second um, for sure. Uh, yeah, I pastor a small church here in the town. Actually, the church is probably right about in the middle of our houses. If we both drove, yeah. we'd probably get there right about the same time. Yeah, I'd say. I, I think I could beat you. I you think might I... do it by maybe a minute or two, maybe. Let's race. <laughs> yeah, let's, you ready? <laughs> After the video, as <laughs> soon as I hit end recording, take off. <laughs> yeah, take off. Uh, yeah, but yeah, yeah, you're, right. yeah, you're right. It's close. It's close to the middle, but I, I, you have to go through a lot more red lights to get here. Oh, man, we go, through, we go through at least three or four or five, something like yeah, that. I've yeah, I've only got one, and I can yeah. cut right on red. So yeah, I, yeah. I think I've got you. <laughs> yeah, you probably beat us. <laughs> yeah. So, but I've been uh, there. Uh, I've been there ten years. This year was the tenth year, so oh, wow. I guess technically I've been there nine years, starting the tenth year. I, we went to church there. Uh, you know, I was the assistant pastor for like about two years. Uh, our pastor, he decided he was leaving, and he he came to me wanting me to take it the year before, and I said, I you know I don't know that we should just transition. We should probably let the church 
you know, maybe make that decision. And mm-hmm. he wasn't trying to just push me in or anything. I, you know, shouldn't say that, but, uh, so he went one more year and that next year he said he was leaving and, you know, it makes you feel pretty good. The whole church came and asked me, would I be the pastor? So after much prayer and thought and time, <laughs> you know, thinking about it, praying about it and getting some peace and, you know, things like that. We took it and, uh, you know, man, I got to tell you, I'm sure every pastor is going to say this. They're going to say, I have the best church. You know, I have mm-hmm. the best people, but I do have yeah. the best church, you know, right. and they treat us so good. Like you just couldn't ask. And it's, you know, I'm not saying they, you know, give us all kinds of money or, you know, right. they do that. They bless us financially, but they bless us with friendship. They bless us in different ways. If we're sick, uh, there'll be two or three of them show up with food. You know, uh, I mean, it's just, it's a really good church, really good people. And, you know, there is no perfect church, you know right. what I'm saying? Well, uh, I, I'm just guessing uh, if they're not causing you headache, <laughs> that's yeah. considered, that's considered being a good church. It's minimal. Yeah. You know, every yeah. church has problems. We right. have little hiccups and, things here and there. Uh, but man, it's minimal. It's, and, and the way I've always told other preachers, you know, I don't have a ton of other preachers come, but, uh, I will have some come in from time to time. And, uh, I always tell them, I'm like, I don't know that you're ever going to find another church that will support you as good as this one while you're preaching. And I Mm -hmm. don't mean that they're all amen in you, but you can feel the love in the atmosphere. Like they support what you're doing. Right. And that it's, it's just easy to preach to people like that. I mean, you almost feel bad, you know, preaching to them because I don't, you feel like they don't need it all the time, you know, but I know we all do, you know what I'm saying though. It's right, just, right. It's, it's a good group of people and uh, you know, we've right. talked about it and, and uh, you know, we actually, I grew up going to church and the church of God and that's your, well, I went mm-hmm. to church of God prophecy, but you're going to the church of God now, right? Yeah, yeah, that's where I go. Uh, and just me being there is probably enough to drive my pastor crazy. <laughs> so, no, uh, he's my pastor's actually my first cousin. So, uh, uh, yeah, yeah, so we, have, we have a good relationship and it works out good. But, yeah, that's, that's where my whole family goes and has always pretty much went. So, I grew up in church uh, as well. Um, and I think that's just, uh, you know, I think that's part of being in the South. You know, I know a lot of our <laughs> Northern friends and maybe Western friends probably didn't grow up in church like we did. No, but, no, uh, yeah. So that's yeah, interesting. Uh, did you ever, was, have you been around YouTube long enough to know uh, Rev Resale? No, I don't think so. Rev Resale. He was one of the first people that uh, I ever reached out to on YouTube. Me and him, started making youtube videos about the same time Dave, david is his name and he's a pastor as well and he used to do reselling on the side and he had a youtube channel called rev resale really? and that, yeah they used to come up here for the 127 yard sale and everything and uh met, met them a couple of times i believe great great people that is really cool and then just out of the spur of a moment he decided he wanted to start another youtube channel called Revstoration, where him and his dad go find these old cars and get them to start. Wow. Get them running. And uh, that YouTube channel took off. So wow. he, he quit reselling. He quit his resale channel, and he pretty much quit reselling because that channel took off so big. Uh, wow, Revstoration. Cool. Yeah, great guys. Rev and uh, his wife's name was Nikki T., and uh, yes, they were real good friends of mine. Still are good friends of mine, but of course they've went a different direction with YouTube. But uh, is yeah, she a viewer? Out. Huh? Is she a viewer? She, yeah, yeah. I mean, every now and then I'll see them comment on my videos. Still, uh, every now I, and then. I think she bought something from me after uh, she, the video. Yeah, she may have. Uh, there was a Nikki, and I won't say the the whole username, but there was—I right. believe it was a Nikki T something. Yeah, it may have been her. Um, that is pretty cool. Yeah, they're they're good people. They live down in Georgia, and uh, 
he's got that southern baptist preacher <laughs> voice so yeah. he, I, I think of him a lot when i'm when i talk to you because uh you guys had similar stories so maybe you need to start a youtube channel where you fix up old cars <laughs> yeah, well, uh, <laughs> because man yeah. he put out like two or three yeah. videos and it took off it went crazy i don't even know how many uh the people listening uh to this video or uh the podcast uh shout out if you uh, remember rev because rev and nikki t because those guys were huge in the community and uh i think about them a lot and miss them in the community but you know i don't i i understand why they went a different way mm. uh, for sure i'm looking up his channel right now he's got 40 almost forty four thousand subscribers on that channel now oh my so, gosh that is yeah. Great. oh yeah he had he Good had a video him, that just like blew up it went to like he was like me, you know, getting 1,500, 2,000 views on his reselling yeah. channel. And he put out a video on that other channel and it got like 80,000 wow. <laughs> and it blew up. Yeah. No, wow. I'm happy for him. I'm happy for him for sure. That man. is good, man. That's yeah. crazy. But, uh, you know, selfishly, I miss them because they were, yeah. they are good people for sure. But yeah. Good people are hard know. to find, you know. Yeah. I mean, I don't even know what brought all that up, but <laughs> yeah. I meant to ask you about them the other day if you, uh, was around YouTube. Uh, we could talk about that too. How we met the first time. Okay. Um, yeah. Because it was actually right after I got moved out here. I believe it was the very first sale I went to. It was at an estate sale. I haven't, did I have my GoPro that day? I don't no. think so. No, I did. I, so. I did not have my GoPro. It was just one estate sale. It was, five minutes from my house mm -hmm. i'm sitting there walking around i actually seen somebody i knew personally uh outside of youtube just personal life uh and was sitting there talking to them and all of a sudden tanya which is caleb's wife oh, it was me it was me. oh it was you that came yeah. up first yeah that's me. right yeah yeah. <laughs> yeah go ahead i got a, <laughs> i got no, a story yeah. about that too you come up to me and s said something i don't even remember what you, you I think I walked up and said, "Hey, you're the old school picker." Yeah, because uh, we was we was watching your videos, and uh, Tanya said, "I think they live in Pikeville," mm -hmm. and I'm like, "How could you even know that?" Mm -hmm. And she just, I guess, from scenery and stuff on your channel. Uh, yeah, you know, she's like, where I used to live. Yeah, and uh, yeah. and I'm like, surely not. They can't be that close, you know. And then you said you're moving. And I'm like, wonder where he's moving to. Mm. And then we run into you and I'm like, Hey, you're yeah, I, think I, I think I had just moved. I think I was moved in, but what was funny is <laughs> because of course I didn't know who Caleb was and he knew me and he introduced, introduced himself. He said, you know, I'm Caleb and my wife, Tanya is here somewhere, but she was <laughs> looking at other, cause we was out in the garage yeah yeah she was that. in the house looking for stuff i think y'all beat me there too so yeah, <laughs> but <probably. laughs> but what was funny was that week that same week you guys had bought me 25 dollars, i believe or no 50 dollars worth of buy me a coffees and you said yeah i'm caleb and my wife tanya i said oh you guys just bought me like 50 dollars of coffee <laughs> and caleb said I don't know. That was probably my <laughs> wife. <laughs> he didn't even know about it. Yeah. Tanya had sent me uh, $50 of buy me on the buy me a coffee link. And uh, poor Caleb didn't even know nothing about it. So well, I know fair, who controls the money at that house. <laughs> to, to be fair, she probably told me and uh, it went in one ear and out the other. Right. Selective hearing. Yeah. Yeah. Shannon accuses me of that for sure. Uh, it's too. it's a thing. It's very much a thing. Well, speaking yeah. of my wife, I did get in the doghouse the other day with my wife. <laughs> you probably um, seen it in a video. Speaking of doghouse, I I said something about wanting another dog. We had a dog for a long time. When we moved, situations caused us to have to give the dog up. We've been in the new house for a couple of years now. I've got the shop set up out here. I said in a video, I'd like to have a dog for the <laughs> shop, you know, a dog, a house dog. Yeah. And 
I have mentioned it to my wife a few times and she has said, no, no, no. And I said in the video, see, you're going to, you're going to find out, Caleb, once you start making these videos, you're going to get in a lot of trouble with your wife. Yeah. I've done been I wrong. said, <laughs> everybody go in the comment section and tell Shannon, I need a dog. <laughs> Oh, <laughs> well, well, we're watching that video and my wife, she, you know, she just gives me the OI, you know, <laughs> you know, the I. everybody oh, that's exactly. married, been married for a while, you know, the look, well, Shannon gave me the look and just said, no, we're not getting a dog. <laughs> so, <laughs> so I'm still dogless for anybody out there that cares, but, uh, you've got a one or two dogs, don't you, Caleb? One or two or five. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. He threatened to bring one of his up here to my house when I, that video came out. <laughs> I was like, <laughs> I no, Shannon dog. didn't veto that. <laughs> well, I don't want to make Shannon mad, so I'll keep it here. <laughs> <laughs> he must know her. <laughs> yeah. Uh, but yeah, she uh, yeah, she just said no dog. But yeah, but all your dogs are outside dogs, right? Every one of them, yeah. yeah. But funny story. My wife, uh, when we got our first dog, she's a great Pyrenees, so she's like nearly 100 pounds. Yeah. And she said, I want her to be a house dog. I'm like, oh, wow. nah, I don't know about all that. You know, this dog's going to be huge. So we actually kept her in our utility room for like uh, probably two months when she was a puppy. And uh, she got uh, something wrong with her. Her hair was falling out. And so we couldn't, you know, during the medicine and stuff, we couldn't even pet her for the first two months. They mm. said, don't pet her, don't touch her fur and all that. So, uh, you know, she stayed back there and, and finally she got so big, she was just, you couldn't keep her in the house and she was chewing the wall and she was tearing the floor. And I'm like, we got to put her outside. So, yeah. But she's a, she's a very good natured dog. Like, you know, most of them will, you know, some of them are kind of not great natured mm -hmm. and they bark all the time. She didn't bark for like six months. We never heard her bark. We didn't even think she could. One day we're outside and we hear something go, whoa. And I'm like, what was that? And we started watching her and she would bark and she'd just go, whoa. And I'm like, oh my gosh, that is horrible sounding. So now when it gets dark, she'll bark a little bit. Or if she sees a UPS truck, FedEx truck, I don't know what it is, but they drive her crazy. She'll bark a lot. Right. But that's about it. But yeah, since then we've got, I, I kind of adopted one long story there, but uh, yeah, I adopted a little brown dog and then <laughs> uh, my wife's brother, uh, his is out here. And then the kids got one for Christmas a piece last, not this last Christmas, but one before that. Uh, so yeah, there's five of them out here see, right now. So uh, you, you are, you are slowly turning into Kevin Commonwealth picker. <laughs> You've got a, you got a shed uh, in your backyard. You yeah. got all kinds of animals. Next thing uh, you know, now now with a podcast also. Yeah. Next thing you know, you'll be getting a tattoo. No tattoo. <laughs> no tattoo. No tattoo for this guy. Uh, I don't like that, that's the next step of becoming yeah. Kevin Commonwealth Picker. <laughs> I, I've never had any interest in that myself, but uh, no. yeah, no, I, don't I don't have any I, either. I'm too cheap to have them. They're expensive. They. Oh man, I worked with a guy that. He had them all over him and he would come to work and show me. And he's like, yeah, this one was just 150. And I'm like, what? $150 for somebody to stab you with a needle? That sounds like fun. Yeah. You know? I mean, I can think of more creative ways I want to spend my money than pain. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Oh, uh, I kid because I care, of course, with Kevin. <laughs> Call him a picker. Well, right. I, I, I'm, I'm honored to be mentioned in such a uh, class of reseller. I'll just say it well, like that. It's if not he sees always. this video, I'm sorry, Kevin, that he compared yeah. us. <laughs> <laughs> well, I've been getting uh, compared to Kevin here lately myself, but it's not been uh, pleasant. <laughs> it's yeah. been yeah. it's been uh, getting dogged with him. So, but yeah. at least, like you said, at least it's in good company. But that's yeah. another story. Yeah. But uh, I've been we was talking about church a little earlier. Okay, I've been our bas uh, our church has been playing basketball every other friday night not even friday nights but just every other friday night okay we played uh not this past friday because it was good friday but the friday before so it's been like what nine days ten days something like that yeah i went fishing for a couple hours today yes i did i went fishing i did no reselling Lucky. today 
<laughs> I didn't know. I caught two, so I'm not too lucky. But <laughs> I did. I did know what I did edit a video this morning. But uh, I did. Well, I dropped my ten drafts too. But I didn't actively list nothing. I didn't ship nothing today. But I was out fishing today, and I bent down. And I'm I'm telling you right now, I didn't think I was going to be able to get back up. <laughs> I mean, I, I you know you hear people say that jokingly. I'm serious when I say yeah. I didn't think I was going to be because my knees are still so sore from basketball <laughs> 10 days oh, later. Yeah. I think that's the worst part of getting old. It's not that <laughs> you, you, you're you getting more sore. It's that you just don't heal up. Uh, yeah. Well, you know, we've talked about it and, and uh, you know, like I had to, I worked full time for nearly 20 years and had to just quit because of my back, you know, mm -hmm. just, can't pick up uh you know i've learned a hard lesson in reselling don't buy stuff if you don't want to ship it because <laughs> yeah. you have to pick it yeah. up you know so yeah, it's all it's all good till it sells yeah <laughs> then you gotta what figure I got it out. And then oh it sold oh no uh, yeah. so i learned that lesson the hard way and i don't buy a lot of big huge heavy stuff i, I buy bigger yeah. stuff but i don't like to get above like 30 pounds anymore you know yeah my doctor actually told me, you know, 20 pounds is what I should be lifting. And I'm like, yeah. really? That's, that's not much. And he's like, yeah, well, <laughs> you know, you shouldn't do it. So. I tell you what, maybe that's my problem with my knees. I'm lifting too much weight from my, <laughs> me, <laughs> me being an overweight. Oh <laughs> uh, yeah. I, I think know that. Be, yeah. I think that may be my problem, but man, I'm telling you right now, two weeks later almost, and we're supposed to play this Friday. And I'll play just because I'm stubborn, but <laughs> <laughs> oh my goodness. I'm telling you, my knees are so sore. I've mentioned it in like two or three videos. <coughs> oh, me. uh, I mentioned it in uh, two or three videos and um, it's not getting better. So I think that's the worst part of being old for sure. I just had a birthday. I just turned 46 about so a week. The old school picker got older. Uh, older. I'm thinking older. about taking school out of my name and just being the old picker. The old picker. <laughs> I, I, I would totally do it if I didn't already have stickers made up. So. <laughs> <laughs> but, you know, I've done spent the money on the stickers, so I guess I'll just leave school in it. But yeah, so that, that brings up a good question. Just how old is the old school picker? 46. I just 46. turned 46. Yeah. Just a, about a week ago. The sun is sitting on you, man. I, I've got one foot in the grave and the other one on a banana peel. <laughs> and, uh, yeah. And if I, if I trip on it, I'm not catching myself because my knees are just shot, man. Yeah. Um, oh, I, think man. I think it's from playing too much because our church was always active. We had local church leagues and industrial leagues and oh, all wow. through all through my teenage years and uh, my early twenties, man, that's all I did was we played, we had a church league softball team, co-ed oh. softball team there and a church go. league men's basketball team. Oh, and man. I played, Oh my goodness. I played so much. And I think I've just wore my knees out. And, Sounds uh, like it. Uh, <laughs> I'm paying for it. Uh, I, I was out here in the shed actually before you come on and uh, watching the Braves and uh, they're currently winning five four you're not a huge sports fan are you well i mean uh i don't make a lot of time for it like i used to uh i'm i'm an old school 49ers fan mm. uh, i will support the titans i don't like the falcons <laughs> oh, sorry man, man, man team, <laughs> i've never man. liked the falcons i'm sorry are you a college football fan tennessee vols oh yeah tennessee vols yeah. all day baby oh man i love yeah listen them. to this though i live in a house my wife is an Alabama fan. My oh, daughter man. is an Alabama fan. My niece Ooh. and nephew are Alabama fans. And me and Logan are the only two that are Tennessee fans. How bad did you rub it in on them this year when Tennessee finally beat Bama? We uh, we watched the whole game and, uh, you know, we rubbed it in a little bit. Yeah, yeah. We, It was probably Logan's first win, wasn't it? Oh, yeah, yeah. He yeah. was born in 2005. So, yeah, he yeah. hadn't seen – I don't think they beat him since then. I think it'd been like I think it'd been like seventeen years, so it was yeah, probably either. Was seventeen. And of course, we heard that they're like, "Yeah, it only took seventeen years to get there," you know. <laughs> hey, like, all, hey, that, all that matters is the last game. Yeah. That's all that matters. That's all yeah. anybody will remember. <laughs> oh yeah, but, but yeah, uh, I like yeah. To, I, I watch a little bit of football. You know, uh, of course, with 
with church, you know, it's yeah, hard Sundays, sometimes, yeah. but, uh, we watched a bunch of college this year and I mean, I don't know college. There's a lot more passion, you know, yeah. for the game. Uh, yeah. I love, I love college football, especially yeah. now that, uh, Tennessee's somewhat relevant again. Yeah. Uh, we had a good season last year and I'm pretty oh, yeah. excited about this coming year, but, uh, yeah. Speaking of sports, man, I have been selling a ton of sports stuff here lately. I listed three uh, head covers for golf clubs this past weekend. And within, like, I think I sold all three of them three days in a row. If you ever see applause van, like clapping applause, yeah. if you ever see that brand of head covers, buy them. Yep. Yep. I sold all three of them for 20 bucks a piece, and they sold within all three days in a row. I was sold, one of uh, them the Smokey uh, the Dog. I sold the Smokey the Dog, yeah, the Tennessee awesome. mascot. I had a Betty Boop one. I think what? I may have sold it for 25 I think. Maybe. That is cool. And then uh, I had another one, too. I can't even remember what it was. But I sold all three of them. But I love selling uh, springtime. Had, man. That's the time to sell sports yeah. stuff. Oh, sure. yeah. I had, I had a uh, Smokey the Dog. Uh, golf head cover like the, it was similar really close to what you sold mm -hmm. and funny story we was talking about returns earlier i sold it and this woman messages me and her her return was i thought it would look more like a bernadoodle <laughs> but it didn't. that was her return reason i thought it would look more like a bernadoodle but it didn't i don't so even I'm know what a bernadoodle is I, I looked it up and it's nothing like smoky I'm like, man, this is a Tennessee Vols dog. Yeah. Oh, like, the type, that's the type of dog, I guess. Yeah, I guess. I, I don't know what it is, but uh, it's crazy. So she sent it back, and I sold it, you know, within a couple of days after I got it back. But, yeah, same here. Uh, I think I've got probably 120 or 30 golf clubs right now. Just that rack you've seen, mm -hmm. it's full now. And I, I don't know wow. if you can see right back there. Yeah, there's a bunch of them leaned up on the wall. Probably thirty of them leaned up that I just run out of room. Did and you Tanya get all those? Took, Tanya listed. took. Well, no, they're not all listed yet. They're all. We got pictures of all of them, and I've got. Uh, shoot, I don't know. Probably, probably forty ready to be listed. But uh, yeah, it's just she took pictures of all of them in about two hours, three, two or three hours. Yeah. I'm like, that is a bunch of golf clubs to take pictures of all at once, but she did it. And, uh, are you, but yeah, are we, you doing, are you doing free shipping on the golf clubs? I am. Uh, I, I started. I have, yeah. I may have to change mine to free shipping on the golf clubs because UPS, man, the rate's oh, pretty much eight, nine bucks. About anywhere. anywhere I mean, unless you're going to Oregon, California, even then it's going to be 12, 13, 14, something like that. Yeah. I've thought about doing, I just made a video about shipping and how I use calculated on everything. And I do. Uh, but with those golf clubs, I may, I may switch them over because I should, we ship them out UPS ground and, yeah. uh, you know, you can pretty much bank, like I said, is either going to be eight or 12 bucks. So, you know, if you added $10 yep. to your price, you would pretty much be covered. So yep. I'm, I'm totally tip. going I'm totally Good. going against what I said in my video that came out <laughs> last night, <laughs> but uh, that's what's great about reselling. You know, you got to adapt and change some things. And, Absolutely. Uh, I've just got some golf clubs that I've been sitting on for a while, and I think it's the shipping. Uh, so I may, yeah. I may uh, s switch it up on that. I, I think yeah. it helps. Uh, I mean, I, we sell. We've probably, I don't know, we've probably sold thirty or forty of them during the winter. You know. Yeah. So well, I think I mean, it helps. People in Florida and people in Myrtle Beach and places like yep. that, man, they they play uh, golf year yep. round. So play it all the time. All and we live time. in a pretty good, pretty good area to buy golf clubs. Oh uh, my gosh, we got like I mean, what I, eight or ten golf courses around here. Yeah, I know we. I know we've got. I know of like five, and of course you know more about this area than I do. I the other golf three, club cover that I sold in, in Fairfield, I believe. Yeah, the other one I sold was a sock monkey. It looked like a oh really you know like the old sock monkey so I saw the sock yeah. monkey Betty Boop and Smokey and That's I mean I'm telling you those three things so quick of course the Masters tournament was this past weekend and yeah yeah anytime the Masters rolls around you're gonna sell some golf equipment for sure but 
Speaking of the Masters, did you see that tree fall? Uh Uh-uh. Oh my goodness, you need to look that up on YouTube. I was watching uh Sports Center or something early in the morning and uh I was I was I think I was working on eBay or something and I wasn't really even looking at the TV. I just heard them I was listening to them talk, you know. And they said uh the Masters has been delayed because to clean up the tree that fell. Well, when it said that, I thought it meant it fell in the middle of the night, you know. They got there that morning, had to clean it up. They delayed the start. It falls right in the middle of the golf tournament. There's people running out. (laughs) There's people running out of the way, every direction, trying to avoid this fallen tree, big old pine tree. It didn't hurt anybody, but I don't know how it didn't. You got to watch it. It's it's the craziest thing I've ever seen. Um, uh, Well, I mean, you know, it just fell out of the blue. Of course, I think they got a bunch of strong winds and storms down there. Yeah, in the tournament like is. we had last weekend up here. So, uh, wow. yeah, if you've not you've not seen that video, go <laughs> go down a rabbit hole on that and just <laughs> type in Masters Tree Fall and it, it'll come up. Jeez. I mean, there's people running in every direction trying to get out from under it. It's crazy. Oh, and it's a, oh it's a big tree, 60, 80 foot. You know, it's not no, it's a widow maker. <laughs> yeah, definitely. definitely. Yeah, so I thought that was wild, but well. We've been going for about 50 minutes. Uh, you got any final words and we'll wrap this first episode up. Well, I did want to ask you, uh, you told me you got your storage unit. I did. Yes. I was um, going to ask you about that. That video is actually set to come out tomorrow. Oh. So by the time you guys hear this, it'll, that video will already be out. But yes, um, I called about a month ago. I've been looking for a storage unit. I had one facility in mind that I wanted to rent from because I pass it going to the post office. It's within five minutes of my house. It's very convenient. I called them a month ago and they didn't have one available. Now this is a 400 storage unit facility probably. Didn't have one available. And I was like, what do you mean you don't have one available? She's like, oh, we we fill up every every time we get one available. I said, okay, do you have a waiting list? She said, yeah. She said, I've only got one other name on the waiting list. So I was, you know, I thought, well, I've got a pretty good chance of getting one next month. Yeah. I said, put me down for 10 by 10, 10 by 15, or 10 by 20. You know, any of those three sizes, call me. Mm And a month rolls by and she did. She called me the other day and she actually had a 10 by 10 and a 10 by 20. And the 10 by 10 was going to be $65. And the 10 by 20 was going to be 95. And I, you know, me, I'm no brainer in my opinion. So I just went ahead and went, went with the 10 by 20. I mean, 30 extra dollars a month. You're talking less than $400 a year for double the space. So I did get one. I'm pretty excited about that. So I'm going to be, I've already got a few things moved in there. Um, Got a rack. (laughs) That's another story too. I went to Lowe's and bought a, I was going to buy, you know, like three or four racks and each rack, uh, the 48 by 72 racks, they'll hold 15 of the medium sized tubs. Well, they only had 20 tubs. So I just went ahead and just bought one rack and 15 tubs. Mm-hmm. because uh, there was no sense buying extra tubs when I didn't have a rack or buy an extra rack because I didn't have tubs to put on it. Right. $360 for one rack. Whoa. And 15 tubs. Oh, my God. I need like 10 of them. <laughs> so oh, I'm going to have, have like four grand in storage yes. for racks and tubs uh, for my death pile. So oh, yeah, I, may have to re- I may have to rethink that. Uh, <laughs> I don't know. But, you know, <laughs> I don't want to put cardboard boxes in there because, no, man. Shoot, you know, man. you can keep it as clean as you want, but you can't control what your neighbors got on the other side. So, yeah, absolutely. You know, if they've got food and mice, then I'll have mice in mine too. So I don't want cardboard in there. So I'm just going to buy them as I go, you know, buy one or two here and there. And uh, they, which I bought all the tubs they had besides like five. So I'll just wait till they get some more in and buy another one. And uh, yeah. But I was happy with the $95. I was actually talking to Eric OBX Picker the other day, and I was telling him about it. And uh, 
he said a 10 by 20 where he lives would be 250 bucks. Whoa. Yeah. Whoa. Because he, he he was like, you got a 10 by 20 for $95? And I was like, yeah. I was like, I thought it was a pretty decent deal. I was like, 10 by 10 was 65 He's like, oh my God. He's like $250, $300 where I'm at at least, which Jeez. he lives on a island. <laughs> oh, yeah. Yeah, he lives on an island out. Uh, he lives in OBX. Uh, so, so uh, yeah. you know, it's uh, basically a peninsula off North Carolina. Or actually, yeah. I think it is an island. I think you got to take a bridge to get there. So, wow. yeah, he lives on the ocean. So, <laughs> I can't imagine, yeah. you know, there's a premium, think, a premium. Yeah, there's a premium <laughs> there for sure. But, uh, yeah. So, all right. So, first episode. What do you think, man? How many views are we going to get on it? At least two or three, I'd say. <laughs> <laughs> well, I figure six. You know, yeah, we got six subscribers. Six views. Yeah. Our families. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> no, Pity I think views. we'll do okay. I think we'll do okay. Uh, if you guys haven't subscribed through YouTube, please do so. And yeah, uh, it's going to be out on all the podcasts. And I don't know what you do there. I guess you subscribe to it there. I've never, yeah. I've never been on iTunes or any of that, yeah, so yeah. I don't even know. But yeah, Caleb, shout out to him because he he set up all the audio side of it. But uh, pretty excited about it. Thank you guys for joining us. Any yes. final words, Caleb? Thanks for being here. And thank you, Chris, for the honor of doing this with you, man. It's awesome. Oh, man, it's fun. You, you got to be, that shows you right there. You got to be careful what you message me. Uh, <laughs> I yeah, might just yeah. say yes. <laughs> yeah, I'm going to have to uh, rethink all that. <laughs> <laughs> all right. Thank you guys for watching. This has been Two Old Guys Reselling Podcast, Episode 1. Thank you, Caleb. Old School Picker out.